Yo, what's up with y'all boys, man? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, as you can see from the title, we don't we don't be talking about gun, you feel me? Guns. I'm pursuing excuse me. I presumably am thinking to talk about guns in America because of uh, you know, the crazy shit that go on over here. But we're gonna be talking about pro gun versus anti gun, you feel me? With the debate and I'm gonna give my points of view in between them talking. You know how this goes. So let's hop right into it. The area that I grew up in, sometimes a gun is the only way to protect yourself. You're anti-gun. You don't, you don't want nobody to have guns. But then that's going to put my family at danger. The pool to the left, I'm going to have all my pro-gun people go stand on the edge of that light and all my anti-gun people on the other side. First statement is, I think my views on guns could change. Oh, I feel like anyone's views can change on things. So I'm kind of surprised that nobody felt like it could change at all. I don't think that I could change completely to like the other side, but I would definitely be open to like looking at it from a different perspective. Bro, that was, this was sort of an ill question, I'm not gonna lie, like, what the fuck sort of response do they want? I think that my stance is very accommodating to both sides. That said, I feel really solid about kind of what I've learned and what I think is possible, so I feel really solid about that, although I'm, you know, open to accommodating for people's needs, you know, people's wishes with their rights. My name is Aaron Clayton. After the Orlando shooting, I realized that my community was very much a target. I had to get involved to do something. Low key, y'all, I think that question was like a weeding out question to see who was open minded and who's not. I think that's what that question was. I don't think it was an actual question that they wanted them to answer, but more of a question to weed out so the viewers could find out who's open minded and who's not. So that's, that's what my perception of that is. Sometimes. I think people on the other side of the issue don't care about me or my loved ones' lives. I, I, I gotta go with that one. <laughs> I gotta go with that one. Actually, yeah. Well, I mean, the area that I grew up in and where I come from, a lot of you may not be able to understand that sometimes a gun is the only way to protect yourself. We all believe there should be certain rules to to getting them, but on my side of the earth, there is no gun laws. My name is. Yep, exactly. See, my nigga right there. I, I'm probably gonna relate with him the most because we both come from like a low, you feel me, from the hood. I guess the areas that you would call the hood. I get what he talking about, bro. Like, it's a lot of folks out here, especially in these uh, poverty areas, the hoods, I guess you could call them, have uh, guns that are illegal, you feel me? So. In these areas, you most likely need one to defend yourself if anything go down, you feel me? Like, I know a lot of... From where I'm from, I know people who got robbed um, before. I know people who got smoked before just because they didn't have no defense on them. So, and if you're in an area that's real dangerous, that you haven't, make it out, that you haven't made it out of yet, you probably need one just in case anything happened. Sunny Hill. Regardless of whatever you say, there's always going to be guns. There's always going to be violence in the world. And I got family protect. I don't think y'all don't care about me or my family. You know, I think we all care about, you know, each other and each other's others, you know, loved ones. I don't care about y'all. I'm trying to protect me and mine. Yeah, I feel you. That's, that's my reason of saying that nobody else cares about it, because I'm pretty sure y'all have the same insight. Mm -hmm. Like you're anti-gun. You don't you don't want nobody to have guns. But then that's gonna put my family at danger. I don't want yeah, that's nobody. not at all. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't want, want nobody to have what guns. We're saying. I yeah. think that yeah. I think that there that's are just ways. how I feel. Like totally. Yeah. The pro gun people a lot of times are like, well, it's never gonna be solved. Like gun violence is never gonna end, and like it, it won't. Right? It won't. And you're absolutely <laughs> correct. But there's a a bunch of ways yeah, to decrease it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So from that question, I'm getting a gist of. We don't really have anti-gun people but we have uh people that think gun laws should be 
changed and it should be more protocol to getting a gun. That's what that's what the groups are. One that believes that we should have guns and one thinks we should have guns but with stricter protocol because from that answer they gave off, that's what the gist I got. But um the courses haven't got too deep yet, but like bro said with the dress, bro, uh most people get that gun so they can defend themselves, to defend their household, defend their family, defend their pets, defend everything. You feel me? Just in case anything happened in this crazy ass world, man. Y'all know it's twenty twenty one, all the crazy shit that happened. You gotta you gotta be able to defend yourself, bro. And I'm sorry to say this, but ain't nothing being a gun. If somebody come at you with a gun and you got a bat, you don't die. They don't turn you into Swiss cheese. So at the end of the day, man, I'm sorry, but especially y'all boys that are like me, that are planning on living by yourselves, moving out, whatever, getting an apartment, getting a house. Especially y'all boys that are living in this in a city, a congested city. Like me, I'm gonna be in a similar uh, situation. You gotta have one on you, man, just in case, cause it's a lot of people that you feel me try to rob, or whatever, do all of that shit. And a lot of these times, these psychopaths that come to rob really come to rob and kill, with no regards to human life, and they do a lot of evil shit. So you gotta have it on you, man. Especially y'all with kids, anybody with kids that's watching this, you understand what I'm talking about, man. You do anything to protect yours. I just had this conversation on Sunday with um. Well, with a with a with a good friend of mine, and we was just talking about this, and he actually has kids. He's older than me, you know, what I'm saying older, like way older. <laughs> but he he was talking about it. He said that he got his for that reason, and we talk about this shit because I was like, when I get mine, it's gonna be for that reason to protect me, my family, my household. They made sure that at the end of the day, I'ma have my I live, I'ma be alive at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Not for me to do nothing illegal or commit any crimes, or do nothing. uh Crazy like that, but just to defend. So that's why I believe how guns should be used in a, anywhere. If you got a gun, you should be used to defend yourself, not to inflict harm on other people for no reason. So that's my take. I've been in a situation in which my life was in danger. Oh man, this is a good ass story, y'all. I think I'm gonna save this for a story time, for real. Like, uh,. I give y'all the gist of the story though. Um, when I was younger, I got robbed before, like uh, home invasion type shit. I was a kid at the time, so g good thing uh, the criminals had. I guess you could say they had morals and they didn't try to uh, hurt us as kids. But I'm gonna tell that as a story time though, because I can get into like the deeper effects of how it affected me and like my my brother it was me, my brother in the crib at the time. But I'm gonna get into the deeper effects it had on me and my brother and and I'm gonna get to how I get how I got older and how it affects me and what I think about guns now and and like I'm just gonna reflect on the whole thing, you feel me? But I'm gonna make that a whole story time because it's like a deep ass conversation I'm gonna have with y'all. But yeah, I got robbed before the long story short. I grew up in St. Louis, so we'd go downtown where there's a huge amount of violence. We're at Home Depot, and there's guys starting to gather around my dad's truck, and I'm in it alone. I'm 14 years old. And literally just, I had to put my dad's gun out while I'm shaking, and literally just set it on my lap. And to show that, it ended up potentially violent, potentially robbery, you know? I don't think um, people automatically are born or like, I'm pro-gun. Like, I think what you experience in your life makes you that way. My name is exactly that's facts right there. That's a W take. People that have been in that sort of environment, that's lifestyle, like understand why you need one. Expect yeah, she made perfect sense. Like no shade to anybody, and this is not a hundred percent proof. Now, I'm not saying if you wasn't, if you have never been in a bad environment, like living wise, <laughs> that uh, that you wouldn't want guns, or if you have, you feel me? I'm not saying this is 100 percent proof, but what what they say is events change people. So like somebody that has been in middle class their whole life, been in gated communities their whole life, been like sheltered really good, probably wouldn't give a fuck about guns like as much as somebody like me who's been in the been in the trenches slash the hood, have seen people. And heard of people getting shot and killed, have seen, heard of people getting robbed and all kinds of shit like that. Has been robbed personally himself. My gun my takes on guns and what should it be used for be different than if you've never been in a situation like that at all. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good take from her. Sarah. 
It wasn't until recently that my opinion changed on how I felt about guns and then I became pro-gun in order to protect me and my future family. I was never pro-gun before and then some guy broke into my place and raped me and I couldn't run away, I couldn't do anything, like literally had to lay there and take it. But I knew that if I had a gun at that point in time on my nightstand, I would have defended myself. Man, that's sick ass story, bro. That shit is sick, bro. That shit lucky hurt my stomach, bro. See, man, this why, this why we need these guns, man. I'm not saying that our gun laws and protocols for getting guns are perfect as it is. I think we need to tweak that a little bit as far as the protocol to get a gun and like we need to test test people's mental mental health a lot more before they get these things, but. Like that, this hand stores like that made me sit in my stomach, bro. Cause, like, y'all gotta think about it. That's a female, bro. Like, for y'all to got, that could have been your moms. That could have been your sisters in that situation, you know what I'm saying? And she already disabled as it is. What kind of sick fuck try to rape a disabled woman, bro? Like, like, niggas in this world is crazy, bro. Like, that could have been your moms, your sisters being in that situation. That can't do shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I think we need these hoes to, to, to defend against these evil motherfuckers, bro. Because cause I refuse to be a victim or let anybody that's in my household or anybody that can help be a victim, man. Like, no cap. I think America has a problem with mass shootings. The whole world is... Right, I'm gonna mute it for that, you know, but that was a good question. Yeah, I think we all should step forward for that one. Come on. It'd be ignorant to say yeah, it's not an problem. issue. Yeah, of yeah, course. Like, I don't want anyone to die. Like, I don't want to see these school shootings. I don't want people to get hurt. We're all for protecting ourselves. But I think, like, when guns are not in the right hands, then it becomes an issue. And I don't think any of us support that at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. In America, I can't even lie. As far as mass shootings, bro, we have been the fucking worst man in the world. We have been the laughing stock of the world for this shit. Cause I don't, I don't know what the fuck going on in people's head in this, in American society nowadays. But these crazy motherfuckers be out, man. They be just shooting, shooting, shooting clubs up, shooting schools up, shooting stores up, grocery stores, they don't give a fuck. It's people out here that's crazy like that, you know what I'm saying? I wish I was getting to earlier. I said protocols of getting a gun should be should be more strict, you know what I'm saying? To keep these motherfuckers from getting the opportunity to do crazy shit like this and take those lives, you know what I'm saying? Like, the mass shootings in America, it's, it's, it has been so many, like way too many, man. Way too many lives lost. Way too many people's lives ruined, ruined man. Like, it's crazy. So, I like how they asked this question. I like the answer she gave because we, we sort of have the same views on we should have stricter gun laws. You feel me? You feel me? Stricter gun protocol so people that's crazy like that can't get guns. You feel me? So, you all for like stricter gun laws or no? <laughs> I mean, there's a point where it goes too far. I don't think I need to take a 5,000 question questionnaire for a psychological test, mm -hmm. you know? Thanks. But like, isn't that worth it? It, it? And like, I'm not saying that that's necessarily what we would definitely do or whatever, but like a 5,000 questionnaire or like people's lives. But sometimes, like, wouldn't you would rather? You be, would you be willing to go through the same process to get an automobile? Training, licensing, yeah. classes, yeah. a renewable license. Yeah. yeah, 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 but not a psychological test. I think it doesn't. What? No, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. I agree with the with the lady in the black shirt. Well, the Caucasian woman in the black shirt. You know what I'm saying? No, no offense, but I gotta distinguish the two. For oh, and I forget. I always forget to say this. But for you guys watching on Spotify or, or Anchor or Google Podcasts, or uh, I do a show. My show on YouTube has a video. So. The people watching me on YouTube can see the video, and I sort of talk over the video. I, of course, I can't do video on Anchor, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, but you guys just hear the audio from the people. So if you ever hear me like describe a person, it's because it's the video. But um, I think psychological tests should be mandatory for fucking guns, bro. Most of the people that's doing these crazy ass crimes, or I might not say most because I don't want to be like. Yeah, but 
a lot of these people doing these crazy ass mass shooters and crimes and uh, that's killing people are not mentally well. You feel me? Like, either it's like depression or some shit like that, or whatever it is. It's a lot of people out here. A lot of these crimes are being done, but people are not mentally well in the head. You know what I'm saying? We need these psych tests to rule these people out from getting a gun. Like, that's my take on that. You feel me? And and I'm and, and I'm pro gun. Like I'm pro that we should have guns in America. But we need. That's one of the signs. One of the areas we need to improve on as far as gun protocol is uh, making people take make sure they're psychologically okay. You know what I'm saying? So we can prevent these these lashings out. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? These lashings the way so we can prevent the way people react and lash out. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what we need to do. We need to we need to test people's brains and psych and make sure everything ticking and everything right before we give these people guns because they're giving these these people that's not mentally well guns and they you know what I'm saying and some people just go crazy you know what I'm saying so that's a W take for the lady in the black shirt you feel me it doesn't have to be so extensive what you're saying but it's sad how someone can come into a gun show and have a lot of money buy whatever they want show a little maybe a little card or something and get like maybe 20 guns and no one's asking you just because you have money a simple background check can just do a lot for people but i also think that a lot exactly man like i i that's that's it is facts we need more stronger gun protocol it's at the end of the day is what it is bro like <laughs> that's that's all it is man you shouldn't be able like she said you shouldn't be able to just walk into a gun show with money and say let me get that uh, ar-15 off the wall let me get that glock 17 off the wall let me get that shotgun off the wall and take three three firearms with you home without without nothing no sight test on nothing so nobody knows what the fuck you're doing with these guns you feel me and these are motherfucking da dangerous weapons you know you know what i'm saying like I, I'm pretty sure y'all, some of y'all listen to this, understand what I'm talking about. Like, we need to be, to have some way to identify people buying these guns and categorize them and to see if they're, if they're well enough, mentally well enough to have a gun or that, or you feel me, or whatever it is. A lot of people, like, because they don't want to have the conversation about gun violence, and they switch over and say, like, oh, it's mental illness. And, like, that needs to be talked about, too, but gun violence is a separate issue that also, like, really needs to be talked about. If my life, yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to y'all boys. Um, I'm low key with the anti the anti gun people on that one, cause we do need stricter gun protocol. You feel me? A psych test is something we we need, my nigga. We need that shit. For before you get a gun, you need a motherfucking psych test. Oh God, that would solve a lot of shit that's going on. And of course, it's people that are mentally well creating crimes. You feel me? Uh, those are psychopaths. That's what we call them. They're psychopaths. They see nothing wrong with what they're doing. Whether it's like revenge shootings or um, whatever it is, you feel me? Gang violence, whatever. It's mentally well people doing these crimes. But it's also a lot of mentally unwell people that are doing these crimes. And this uh, quick, you feel me, psych test will rule a lot of these um, people out. You feel me? So... I'm with the anti-gun people that we need stricter gun protocol, no cap. Was in danger, I would kill. Oh, hell yeah. Can I walk faster? <laughs> no, I, I literally don't think I would have, like, it in. I don't know if I would have you it want, in. You want, you, nah, nobody, nobody has it in them until the moment comes. Yeah. Like, literally, fear doesn't even become a thing anymore. Yeah. Like, it disappears, and it's like fight or flight. Yeah. Like, and you either freeze and die, or you make it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna make it. Some people. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's not funny, but oh God, me, bro. Listen. Anybody threatening me with my life, I'm coming out alive. I refuse to be another statistic in America, bro. As far as like uh, body count, like I refuse, bro. I must. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a survive. Like with me. I'm going to give my take on how to use a gun, like how I would use it. I just had this conversation on Sunday, like I said. Me, my first instinct is not going to be shoot to kill. Like, I'm not going to be doing that. Like, when I get when I get my guns, I want to be trained to the point where even in the, um, even in the midst of danger, I can, I can be able to, uh, like, have clear thoughts and know what to do. So, like, me, I want to be able to be 
calm and shoot like as an example of somebody trying to rob me they, I see they got a gun I wouldn't be able to like shoot somebody in the elbow or some shit make them drop the gun and just get them out of there you feel me without killing them like my goal with against to defend myself not to kill anybody y'all get what I'm saying so me for example my first my first point is not gonna be to kill nobody you know what I'm saying like I'm gonna shoot somebody I'm gonna shoot somebody in the elbow the kneecap something something that should like disable them so they're not a threat to me but it's a point it's a it's a it's a line you cross to where if I shoot you in the elbow if I shoot you in the elbow and you still coming at me I, I'm your life is over like I'm sorry it is what it is but it's this is my rule of thumb as far as um what you should do in gun situations in one on one one on one cases um I believe hold on hold on uh, let me let me get my thoughts together A one on one, if it's one person, and and I must and and this is all saying you got to jump on a person. As far as you've been sprung by surprise, I said like I wake up, I go to the door, and it's a person that jump out with a gun. Hey, you feel me? Spray them down. You feel me? You feel me? Cause, cause that's that's your reaction. But, but uh, as far as like it's a one on, I'm assuming like this is my house. I got cameras around. I got to jump. If I got to jump as one person. I'm disabling them. My first one, I, I'm gonna shoot them in the elbow or something. You feel me? Shoot them in the kneecap and the leg. Disable them real quick. That's it. If it's two people, two people or more, I'm spraying them up. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not playing. I'm not playing a game where I I disable one and one can still shoot me. I'm spraying them up. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna be the clip if it's two or more people in my house, bro. Like no cap, two or more people. Uh, I'm probably shooting a kill, you feel me? Just for my safety, because I can't disable one and try to, you feel me, and then the other one shoot me, like, I'm not dealing with that, so. Two or more people, I'm I'm shooting a kill, no cap. Just to f- defend my life, to make sure I'm safe. But if it's one person, I'm not shooting a kill. But that's just my rule of thumb as far as what I would do in situations. And I can, and that's just my rule of thumb. I've never been in a situation to where I had to use a gun in that. I don't know what I would really do, because I've never been in there yet, but... I'm going to say I want to be trained enough to distinguish the difference in situations and the danger levels so where I can I can deal with them accordingly, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to have to kill nobody, but if I got to, I will. People don't got it in them. Mm-hmm. You can always just, you know, shoot them in a place where they won't be able to move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's what some people think, but when I went to a, I did my care and conceal class, they said if you're trying to shoot them in the leg, you have enough time to get away yeah. or, or to realize yeah. you're not in danger. Your, your life isn't in danger. That's a bad take. I ain't gonna lie, that's a bad take. <laughs> some people, some like I said, some people are trained to the point where they can think in situations like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't have clear thoughts on what to do. That's why I say training is important when it comes to shit like this. Because if you train to know, okay, um, it's one person in here. Okay, I know what to do. I got to jump on him. I'm just gonna disable him real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people are trained to do trained to do that. Like, if, but as far as I said, if it's multiple individuals, you can spray into the club, you feel me? Because, uh, they give example, like, Gucci Man, Gucci Man, as far as my rapper. He might not be the best example, but I'm going to talk about this. Gucci Man. Gucci Man was in a situation like this where three people came, piss open him, do all of that. Gucci Man grabbed, grabbed the gun, he stole one, and he ended the clip. He ended up killing one. And that situation where it's three more people, you got to empty the clip just because you can't disable one, you don't get... Return fire from two other. You got to get a jump and you feel me? Do what you got to do. So at the end of the day, nobody wants to take your lives. But in some some cases, you got to. You no. Know? And so they said, you know, if, if you're pulling that gun out, you're shooting somebody, you're shooting to kill. I guess I just, I don't understand. I understand fighting for your life. Mm-hmm. That's why I came to the, to the center, for sure. But, like, all this talk about, like, how to protect ourselves, how to be in these situations, blah, blah, blah. It's like, again, we're just increasing guns and i i keep just want i want to bring us back to like how can we combat this from the other end i don't want to carry guns i don't want to have guns in my club i don't want to 
I want to be there to dance. I don't want to have a firearm on my, on my leg and like. But we be with live friends. in a society that. Yeah. So you rather so can't just we, not have a world. I don't. I don't think but we can, can we, retract we, from that. Though. Yes, we, we can. Have, we can because other countries have done that. Yeah, That's but right. you're taking the right away. No, no, at that no. Point. But wait, wait, wait. If if I can prove to you that there are ways to enact gun reform that will decrease the amount of guns out there, increase education, and not hurt the ability of law-abiding citizens to have access to firearms, would you be willing to discuss ways to do that? Yeah, I'm all, like I said, I'm all for education, but I don't think, like, at the end of the day, like, if someone's trying to kill me, I'm gonna kill them. I mean, okay, I'm so not, that's, yeah. but, that, but that is, you're allowed to right now. You're yeah. allowed to have that gun. And so we keep kind of saying what we're, is already in place. This is already possible to have all of these guns. Like how can we start looking at this and you know, changing our minds and our, our Congress, our government you know, leaders' minds? You guys keep talking about education, but that is not a reality. In that it, we're not allowed to instill reform that gives us gun education. So it's just like layman's ideas, batting around ideas on how to kill, how to kill. Okay, so I feel what Burr's talking about. Burr's trying to say, um, basically, we should be fighting to just eliminate the need for guns overall. But like, that's at this point, it's like a, it's like the war on drugs. You feel me? I always compared to that. You're never gonna win that battle. It's always gonna be bad guys with guns. You know what I'm saying? So. That's why we have guns for for law-abiding citizens to protect themselves. Uh, yeah, some people, some law-abiding citizens do crazy shit with guns, but it's to protect us against the bad guys with guns. You feel me? Like, uh, it's, it's just like that. Take like in a in a fairy tale world that works. You feel me? But in modern society, that does not work. You feel me? Like. Somebody gonna have a gun regardless, you feel me? You and I would rather be a good somebody with good intentions to bad intentions, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna give you an example, man. Like, um Like look up uh for y'all don't know, I'm a I'm really into rap music, all of that. Uh look up the F F B G duck situation, the murder. The uh drop not a drop by, it was a walk down. Walk down right there in downtown Chicago. I sh am uh just a, like a I guess for like, how say this? This out of the blues fact, I was just in Chicago and I was like downtown where bro was. But this gave an example about the FBG duck murder. Downtown Chicago, they hop out, uh, and they spray them up. Boom, they spray them up. Glocks with thirty clips, illegal guns. You know what I'm saying? Illegal guns, illegal. <sighs> he dies, right? Now imagine that's you. Right, and you're not allowed to have protection against yourself. You feel me? Like that's the point of us having us to protect us from people that have bad intentions with guns. It don't it don't fucking matter if we say, well, uh, Americans shouldn't have guns. Blah blah blah. blah. Somebody don't have a gun, and somebody have a bad intention, especially with these unmarked guns that have no serial number, no nothing on it. Now they did an FBC duck case, and a lot of murders in Chicago, my friends from Chicago, a lot of murders in Chicago are done with illegal guns to the point where the the the, the solving rate on murders in Chicago is very low because you can't, like, these guns have no no tracking on it, you feel me? And this, and just to give you a heads up, the FBC duck murder happened over, like, a year ago, and they have not found nobody, nobody has found, have been found guilty to that case, to that murder, you feel me? Like, matter of fact, I'm talking about this case because it's just fresh in my head. Um, they just found, they just tried to uh, convict somebody or they just arrested somebody for the murder because they bought a vehicle that was used in a crime. A year fucking later, they just found a vehicle that was used in a crime. The guns, it's literally people, the, the shooters, dropped their, some of them dropped their guns there and they can't do shit with it because, of course, they had um, gloves on and shit. But it's no serial number, you feel me? And we got to think about it. If these illegal criminals can get these guns, we as people, law-abiding citizens, should be able to get these guns to protect ourselves against that shit. That's my ruling with it, especially with being in a situation to where, if I was a doll in that situation where people came around, they came to rob me, um, I literally heard them through the door and I was a kid say, oh, you don't need the guns, the kids, they would have probably blicked me up, you feel me? 
And as an adult, I don't want to never go in, be in a situation like that and not being able to defend myself and being at the mercy of the criminals. You feel me? So, word. That's my take on that shit. I'm overall against violence at the end of the day. Um, I wouldn't need or want to have a gun if there wasn't violence in the world. Sometimes it's a right because it's a necessity sometimes. So how do we change, how do we do that? Where we start changing the conversation where people don't immediately relate pro-gun to uh, or we'll don't you, you know away. that yeah. pro gun can equal pro gun reform? Oh, I mean that's why the we're issue, all here. That's why we're all here. We're all risking something by saying something. I always taught that don't ever um, like state your opinion on hot topics because you're just asking for it at that point. Right. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you have to speak up because being silent is being just as guilty. Mm -hmm. I think the society right. yeah. needs to learn to speak, like. Educated people need to sit down, come together, and talk about things. You guys have something to say, and we said it, and we accept all of each other's views. Yeah, I told you we would not leave hating each other. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. Okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. Hey, guys, I'm Amari. I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you. Uh, we disagree sometimes, and it's yes. okay, because this is middle ground. This is Middle Ground. We hope you guys liked it, and we hope that we can continue to bridge people together through videos like this. Please let us know in the comments uh, what side you fall on and what your thoughts are. Tell us why you believe what you believe. Yep. Jubilee. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the episode. Uh, like I said, I always like these episodes. These are videos that low-key we comment over because the they always have p like peaceful debates and as they're very accepting people and they don't over talk each other or turn into argument so like i said i always I, I i appreciate the vibe of this debate this combo um as far as like i already read it read it I, what my bad i'm stuttering like a bitch y'all i already reiterated my points about what i think we should do with guns and just to give a summary of it yes i believe we should have guns yes I believe uh, guns should be used to protect, not inflict damage. Um, I do believe we should have more reforms and uh, stricter gun protocol to prevent these crazy ass incidents we have. But anything I said now will probably just be overkill because I said that shit earlier in the episode. But just again, I'm just going to end it all like this. This was one statement. If I had a gun, when I get when I get my own crib, I will have a gun. When I have a gun, I will. My protocol is this: defend myself, and the safest way for for everybody in the situation is the first step. But once that goes out the window, you gotta shoot to kill. That's it. You feel me? <laughs> so try to defend yourself without taking lives. But if push comes to shove and it's you versus them, it better be them. You feel me? So <laughs> I'm in the episode with that, man. Uh, I hope y'all like this conversation. Uh, comment down below what you think about gun laws and uh, guns in general. You feel me? Comment down below what you think and what we should do about it. Comment down your opinions. I always want to get you guys involved in these episodes. So, let me know. Also, uh, if you made it to the end, let me know what you think about, what you, what you guys want me to talk about next, you feel me? Because uh, I'm down to talk about anything. Like I said, you guys, essentially, I want you guys to be able to run the show. So, uh, comment what you guys want me to talk about next, and I'll talk about it. So, with that being said, I hope you guys have a good night. Uh, story time on Friday, like I said, it's gonna be a good story time. It's gonna be more on a funny side because I gave you guys more of like a, a serious one last Friday. So this one coming up on this Friday is gonna be a funny one for y'all. Hopefully, give y'all some laughs, and I hope y'all have a good night. Peace out.